Good evening, everyone. Hope you had a wonderful Thursday. Welcome to our webinar that, as you've seen, is titled Unlocking Digital Payments. And um, in this webinar, we will be sharing with you and helping you discover tools that will help you take advantage of online payments and this ever-growing online market in South Africa. I'm just going to start off by talking you guys through what we have planned for you today. We're going to unpack a little bit about how your business can start um, accepting payments online and playing in the online space without needing to build a website, which has been quite a barrier to entry that we've noticed across the small business landscape. And to help us, we have our product designer on the call, goes by the name Tawanda, who will run us through the ins and outs of the various tools that we have at our disposal here at Ikoka. But before we get into that, I'd like to paint a picture around the size of the prize in terms of the digital landscape. And just to start off, I'll throw a couple of stats at you guys. I'm starting off with the amount of people in South Africa who are using the internet. So we have 80% of South Africans recorded last year who have actually used the inter uh, internet. Furthermore, we have 27 million people in South Africa who have shopped online. And even more than that, we have 28 million South Africans who use social media on a daily basis. So it's a big pie and there's a big opportunity for small businesses to engage with customers who are internet savvy, who are shopping online, and even furthermore, who are using social media to uh, conduct a lot of their e-commerce and shopping. How do you do it? How are we as Ecorca going to enable you to do it? Obviously, in order to tap into this big opportunity, you need to use technology that enables, enables you. And at Ecorca, um, that's our area of expertise. We offer a suite of technology and a suite of products that help you tap into this. I'm going to uh, start off with talking you through two key products that we're going to walk you through today that's going to help you tap into this opportunity. The first one is called the Ecoca Pay Link. So the idea behind this is it's an easy way to get paid by sharing a simple link that you can share through um, the channel of your choice. So WhatsApp, social media, or email. Alternatively, you can actually use a QR code. So you can print out the QR code or use it on your phone and have people scan the QR code and process payments. And second to that, we have this tool we call the Ecoca Invoice tool. And with this, you can create an itemized invoice that you send to your customers via WhatsApp or email. I'm going to take a bit of time to walk you through the various types of pay link that we have within our ecosystem. And these are custom built with merchants and business owners like you in mind for your different use cases and your different needs. The first one, we call it the quick payment. And as the name implies, it allows you to request a quick once-off payment from your customer. The second one is called the multiple payments pay link. The idea here is that if you are selling a product or service and you would like to collect multiple payments from your customers on an ongoing basis, you can create one pay link and accept payments from them. Then third, we have a donations pay link that you can use whenever you are doing some sort of a fundraiser and you would like the customer to determine how much they would like to pay you. And that is essentially the suite of products that we'll be walking you through today. You guys have had a view of the size of the prize, a very big market to obtain, um, and we're going to enable you to do that without even needing a website. So I'm going to, without further ado, hand over to my colleague, uh, Tawanda, who will walk you through a demo of how each of these products work in detail. Tawanda, take it away. Great. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for that intro. I think you've made my job much easier. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Tawanda. I'll be taking you through the demo of the IK PayLink products, as well so, as the... I'm sorry, Tawanda. I'm just going to pause you there. Yeah. We just need to check if we can actually hear you. Um, technical reasons. Okay. Please do give us a second. Can Okay, I see some thumbs up on the call. Can you guys give a, a thumbs up if you can hear Tawanda? Okay, I'm seeing a couple of thumbs ups. Okay, Tawanda, you may proceed. Okay, great. Thanks for that, Frank. Yeah, so uh, I'll be walking you guys through the various uh, 
payment link uh, products that we have, as well as the IK invoice. The plan is to walk through the pay link products, take a break, uh, maybe uh, uh, open the floor to some questions and then move forward to the IK invoice. Uh, I think one thing to mention is uh, what I'll be showcasing today is very much demo data from a demo account. So it shouldn't be taken as uh, perhaps a live merchant account, which would be very different from what you guys experience. But the the flow of creating these multiple pay links will very much be the same. All right. So I think that's that's it. I'll kick off from my end. Let me share my screen. Great. Can you guys see that? Yes, we can, Sawanda. Perfect. All right. So uh, this is the uh, login page for the for the dashboard. Um, I'm just going to uh, log in, which is what you guys would expect to do. When I log into our uh, a beautifully designed Ikoka dashboard, you land on the cell summary, which we won't be touching on too much today, but you can see all your, your metrics and how to manage your business. But for the payment options, you uh, will look to the left and to go under payment options um, and click on IK pay link. So once you land on the IK pay link page, um, we'll basically give you a brief description of uh, what IK link is as well as some more info about how to use it. So you've got that pop-up here. If you click on how to create an IK pay link, we'll actually give you a walkthrough on how to do it. Um, so step one would be to choose a payment link. Step two, uh, set up a payment link according to what you want. Step three being uh, publish that pay link and then share that link with your customers so that they can actually um, pay you through that link. You have the ability to go to our help center website where you can then learn a bit more about these uh, pay links if the information provided on the dashboard is not enough for you. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, great. So I'm going to start by just starting from the from the basics, which is the um, um, one time, we call it the one time quick payment link. And I'm going to walk you guys through how to create that. Um, so you've got the one time payment link, you've got the multiple payment links, and then the donations, which Frank is already, as well as the history of all your pay links. Uh, so these are some examples that we've done um, in the past. But basically, if uh, within your business, if you have created pay links before, you'll be able to see all the history of those pay links, the reference, the status, whether it's paid or unpaid, the, the creation date, the payment date, the amount, as well as you can view that pay link uh, for a bit more detail, whether you want to reshare it or in the case of multiple pay links, if you want to see actually, you know, uh, which customers have paid you multiple pay link, which I'll walk through um, in detail. Cool. So jumping into the request pay link. So very straightforward. Um, when you want to um, create a quick time pay link, you need to specify your amount. So in this example, I'll just use um, uh, uh, an amount of five rand. The the reference here will be, um, we're going to use a very <laughs> um, fictitious character called Connie, and she's a, she's got a shoe shop. So we're going to uh, be pretending that uh, Connie is trying to accept payment for some shoes she's selling. Um, she does, um, her shoes are slightly cheaper than <laughs> what you'd expect in the market. Uh, but yeah, she still does uh, run a profitable business. I'm just going to type in here uh, a very basic um, payment reference that you might use, this would depend on your type of business that you run. So you specify the amount, you specify the reference. This could be, you know, you want to specify the the color of the shoe, maybe white, um, the might be size, um, size nine, for example, in this case, uh, because it's a shoe shop. And then from there, you can just click create pay link. You get this confirmation modal just to uh, allow you to confirm that you're happy to create the pay link. Otherwise, you can go back. So in this case, you say yes, create pay link. That will just take one or two seconds and your pay link is basically created. So from here, um, you have the ability to uh, uh, share this all by email, uh, what, uh, uh, the, preview the link together right right on the call. Otherwise, you can also copy the link to paste it um, uh, to paste it or whether on WhatsApp or on SMS uh, to to your customer. So if we preview the link from that, which you will be able to do uh, uh, through through the access of your account. 
we're just giving that a sig to load. Basically, uh, you've created a quick pay link uh, of five and um, Nike sneaker, and you provided a description. And the description field is open to your own interpretation. If you want to provide a bit more instructions um, to your customer or a bit more detail about the product you're selling, it just depends. From here, your customer can either they want to pay with PayPal or debit or instant chip. So if they click um, create, uh, credit or debit card, click next. From there, um, your customer will to uh, make a payment. Um, uh, yeah, make a payment through your pay link. Um, for the quick pay, pay link, we'll not try and make a payment. Um, I'll try and make a payment on the multiple pay links because I have um, one interesting feature. I also want to demonstrate that we have built uh, within the dashboard for the multiple pay links. But basically, um, if the card, your client's card, card details are correct and everything uh, matches up on the bank, your pay, your pay link will go through and you'll be able to, to see that from the dashboard. So if we just navigate back to IK pay link on the left here, um, that pay link that we just created for some Nike sneakers and some paid. We just created it now at uh, 12 past five on the 2nd of November for five rand. Um, you can view it uh, so that you can share it again. Um, maybe, you know, you've lost the link or you just want to share it again. You have the option. I think the, the key thing to mention here is the quick pay link is only a one-time pay link. So once it's paid, you can't uh, use it anymore, which is where uh, uh, the pay links come in. And I think uh, I say go into the multiple pay links. So yeah, so coming back to our uh, landing page from here, you can click uh, request multiple pay links. Um, and from here, you can also specify the amount. So you can specify um, the amount of your product. You have the option to actually allow merchants to specify the amount themselves. This is in case of service-based businesses. Perhaps um, it's a it's a call-out fee, or perhaps a service that depends on the quantity or the time that was spent. You can actually allow. Uh, you can click this button, which will basically ha hide the fields for uh, the um, the amount and allow customers to to specify that amount. Otherwise. You can either enter the amount and the reference, uh, a description. You can also choose uh, for your merchants to add uh, an, a reference themselves. So they can either put in their cell phone number or their name. And this will help you on, on the dashboard side to see who's paid and who's not, um, as well as allow them to um, add tips. So if, if, if your customers uh, want to be able to tip you, you have the option to just trigger that through this multiple pay link. Cool. So I'll just, um, in this example, I'll just take the scenario where um, you want your customers to, uh, to, to specify any, any amount. So we can then go there again, uh, using this, a, a similar example of uh, some Nike sneakers. You type in your reference, you type in your description. Um, perhaps, you know, you've got sizes three uh, to nine in white and black. So this will all appear on your pay link uh, on the customer side when you create it. And again, like I said, this is very much examples. It will uh, be based on uh, your type of business and you can specify what makes sense for your business. So from here, you can create the pay link, confirm. Your pay link is created. The cool thing about the multiple pay links is actually we provide you with an extra feature, which is the QR code. So basically you can download this QR code uh, onto your machine, print it out, stick it up on your shop, um, and merchants can just scan it with their phone and that will take them straight to the payment link where they can uh, pay. Whether you've specified the amount or not, you have that option. So if you click download, you have the option to choose a JPEG, PNG, PDF, or SVG. Uh, so in this example, if we just take a, PNG, uh, a PDF, for example, click download, uh, that's auto automatically download downloaded and if we view it quickly you can see it right there uh, you can then print this out or whether that's putting it on your on your um, social media platforms so that your merchants can pay you um, so that makes it makes life quite easy in terms of um, not having to resend this pay link multiple times perhaps you can display this um, 
at your shop or on your uh, website or your social media platforms. You still have the same options to email, WhatsApp, uh, preview the link, which we'll do now, or copy the link to paste it somewhere else. Otherwise, you can click done, which would then bring you back uh, to our home page. So if we preview that link that we just created, you can see here uh, it's for the Nike sneakers, uh, sizes are three to nine uh, in black and white. Merchants can then choose to insert um, an amount they want to pay. So in this example, I'll insert um, five rand and maybe you want to tip uh, two rand. This is all, these are all options up to your customer. This could be 5,000, it could be 2,000. I just want to uh, make that clear so that um, um, it's not like, you know, you can only receive these tiny amounts. This is just for example sake, because I'm about to pay it. Okay, perfect. So as a customer, you can put a reference or so put my name as a reference or so put uh, so that um, uh, the merchant knows uh, who I am, um, as well as when you're creating the pay link, you have the option to allow uh, customers to specify their uh, street address it's their street address in the case where you actually need to deliver the goods to them. So that's all part of uh, the configuration we did. So I'm going to specify, um, actually, let's use our fictitious character here, Connie. Um, so it's Connie Max. Um, her email is Connie at ecorker.com. Okay, I'll just grab her number. So four. 0023588. So you put in the number. We have a, a autocomplete on our address, so that makes it quite easy. Um, so I'm just going to pick a random address here um, that will be auto populated into um, uh, into the fields. Um, and then if it's a complex, they can specify. So from here, you can then click pay. Just like that, uh, you the customer is able to specify the amount they wanted to pay. And this is uh, makes sense for where, where your products are variable. It depends on how much they ordered or a service-based business where it might uh, be based on how many hours you spent at the client's house. Um, and then they can also tip you, uh, you know, without... Um, you know, without the hassle of, you know, having the money in cash or anything like that. So from here, they can then click credit card, uh, pay, I'm just going to uh, quickly drag the screen out just to put in my card details, just to protect them. Okay, perfect. So my card details are in, the payment is being processed. Okay, I'm just going to approve the transaction on my end. Okay, that's approved. That didn't work for whatever reason. I'm not sure why, but basically um, that should have uh, worked. The demo gods are working against us. But yeah, basically um, I was uh, I got a request on my banking app to approve the payment, which I did. I didn't go through, uh, but basically you'd expect that payment to go through. And then when you come back uh, to the dashboard, um, to your history, uh, you'd have uh, then seen that 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 pay link that you that you that you created and. Um, let me just refresh this quickly. You can view that latest pay link. Okay. So yeah, current week. Okay, perfect. Okay, I can't see the latest pay link. Um, 
Okay, we'll look into that. But basically, uh, you'd be able to then see your history um, in the in the in the um, your your pay link, your multiple pay link history in the in the list uh, down here. And I think it's something to do with the payment uh, that that didn't go through. So uh, we'll look into that. Um, but basically, that's your multiple payment link, and that link can be used multiple times. Um, and that's that's really the point of the multiple pay link. Uh, Customers can 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 pay with it multiple times without um, you having to create a new one. So moving on to donations. Um, so the the donation feature has a few extra fields that you can feel that uh, make sense for when you are fundraising or trying to raise donations um, uh, for a specific uh, event or a, a specific cause. So again, uh, I'll take you guys through the process uh, quite straightforward. Um, you have to just fill in all the fields. So I enter the fundraiser name. I've got a um, example in mind. So um, a baby shower. So Kumalo's uh, baby shower. Just gonna specify yeah, the Kumalo, uh, the Kumalo baby shower, and then the description would be. Um, let me just copy the description that I have put together here. So basically, this would be what your customers would see when they're trying to, when you're trying to conv not convince them, but give them words of encouragement to donate. So help us celebrate the newest member of the Kumalo family. And again, this could be in any, uh, this could be anything that makes sense within your context. Uh, but as an example, you could be trying to raise funds for a baby shower. So you can specify the website URL. We just put in coca.com uh, for now, but if you have a website where there's maybe a bit more uh, background story about um, um, you know, why you're raising these funds and what they're gonna do um, and what they're gonna be used for, you can link it there. You have the option to also link your social media pages so that people can actually be able to connect with you on social media. And I think it adds a bit more legitimacy to your business. So I'm gonna copy a few links here, and these are just links to our Ikoka social media platforms. As an example, so I'll paste in Instagram, a link to Instagram, and also paste in our link um, to uh, Twitter. Um, you can also allow your sponsors to leave a message. Um, that's a toggle that you have here. Uh, so you can toggle that and we'll see what we see on the other end. Yeah, everything is filled in. We're happy. Uh, we can then create the link. Perfect. So the link is created uh, very quickly. Um, and from here, um, you can also download the QR code um, to then share on social media or if it needs to be sticked up uh, on your physical shop. Uh, otherwise, you can share it via, via email, WhatsApp, uh, or copy the link as well. If we, if we try and preview the link, again, um, we will be able to see the link, but slightly different now. So you've got the website URL sitting at the top here. Um, you've got the social media platforms. So if you click on any one of these, they'll actually then take you to Facebook, or if it's Twitter, it'll take you to Twitter or X, and uh, same for, for Instagram. Your little uh, description that you left there is available, help us celebrate the newest member of the family. You can, then your, your sponsors can then uh, specify the amount they want to donate, leave a message, um, you know, maybe like con con congratu congratulations, and then you can click donate. Uh, so from there, that will just guide you straight to the um, payment uh, screen as well, where you can then specify whether you want to pay with a uh, credit or debit card or instant EFT. So from here, the process is quite straightforward. You just need to put in your details and confirm the payment. And um, you as the merchant, you'll be uh, notified uh, when the payment is made. Um, and then yeah, that way you can also see or come to the dashboard um, under your <clears throat> your settlement history. You can then see whether uh, that particular payment link was paid or was not paid. Uh, so in this example, you can see this one was paid a while back. Uh, it will have a status of, of paid. Cool, um, I've been talking quite a bit. I'll take a pause there uh, for any questions. Uh, Frank, uh, I don't know if there's any questions on the chat that we can answer. Cool. Thanks for that, Tawanda. Um, really comprehensive view of our product suite. And I 
know for a fact that all the business owners on the call are, are thinking of ways in which they could use these to tap into the the opportunity within the online space. Yes, we do have questions in the chat. Um, but before I get into um, uh, some of the questions that we have in the chat, I'd just like to call out for all the people on the call that we are sending a link or we have sent a link to our YouTube channel in the chat where you can um, watch detailed how-to videos that walk you through all these features um, that Tawanda is taking us through today. So if you'd like to refresh your memory um, and go through the process again, uh, take a look at some of those links in the chat. Um, okay, so Tawanda, let's transition into some of the questions that we've seen coming in the chat. Um, from Wonderman in the chat, we have a question around whether um, a business owner can choose which fields are compulsory for their clients. Yes, that's a good question. I'm going to attempt to answer it. Um, so you, um, you, you can't specify um, explicitly, but I think uh, part of our um, validation that we do on the end is to uh, in, ensure that, um, for example, if someone's, uh, if, if it's a, if it's a if it's a pay, it's a multiple pay link where you can specify the amount that that amount is not zero, um, as well as um, in the case where it's a quick time pay link, the the your merchant can't really edit that amount. Uh, either they pay it or they don't, and you from the dashboard perspective you can see whether it was paid or unpaid. So um, in the case where they have the option to choose what amount, um, we'll, we'll check to make sure that it's not zero. Um, but yeah, I don't, uh, currently we don't have the feature where you can, I guess, specify a minimum amount, uh, which could be maybe what you're also referring to. Thanks for that um, answer, Tawanda. I'm just going to add on to that. Um, as you guys have probably seen within the, within the flow and the journey of creating um, a quick pay link and multiple pay link, even a donation, there are fields that you can um, show or not show. So you can choose which fields your client sees or does not see. Uh, but at this point, you cannot choose what is optional uh, versus what is actually required. This um, product has been designed with your use case in mind. So things such as entering amount, um, that is something that needs to be there. Uh, whether you enter in the amount or they enter in the amount, you can choose that. Uh, but it, it, is, it is absolutely required that that type of field gets entered in. But um, you can see more about that in the video that we'll be sending through or the link to the YouTube channel that we'll send through. The next question that we have within the chat is, how do you create the QR code for payment? Um, Tawanda, would you like to answer that? Yes. Um, so the QR code for payments is available on the multiple payments and the donations. So you won't see that option on the quick pay link. Uh, quick quick time payment just because it's a once off payment once it's paid it's paid but it it does uh, make sense to have that option on the multiple payments where you might have ten hundred customers paying through that link so you basically create the link uh, create the payment link maybe we we'll just demonstrate that quickly create the payment link um, just gonna put a quick example here uh, we don't really need a description we're not gonna collect customer delivery information. So we've created a multiple pay link for 10 Rand. So here on the on the success screen, you can then download the QR code basically in any format that you want it in, whether it's PDF, PNG, and J JPEG. Once you download it, you can then print it and then stick it up where you uh, would like it to be or perhaps share it on social media. Thanks for that. It's quite a comprehensive um, answer. And thanks for sharing how that process works, Tawanda. Um, we have another question from Robert within the chat. Um, he's asking, where is the integration with the relevant social media platforms? Mm, this is a, an interesting one. Frank, you want to take a stab at it? I could, I could. Um, I, I, I will take a leap, Robert, to assume what you mean by that. A lot of these products are built with social media in mind. The one uh, platform that these are built with in mind is a social media platform such as WhatsApp. Um, and what happens at the end of creating a pay link is that you're able to send it on WhatsApp. So as Tawanda has showed you, you can actually select that you'd like to send it on WhatsApp and it'll open up your WhatsApp and you can select who you send it to. The other social media platforms um, have been uh, considered when we uh, built this. So 
as you uh, go through this process, you end off with a link at the end of the process. And that link is something that you can then take into your social media platform. So if you're selling on Facebook, you can take that link and post it on your product on Facebook. If you're selling on Instagram, you can post it um, on Instagram as well. So the idea here is that you're able to create these multi links and use them throughout any social media platform that you need to use them um, in um, through and via that link. That's um, that's uh, the way I would um, answer that question. Any uh, addition to that, Tawanda, that you'd like to add? No, I think you covered it. Okay, cool. I'm just going to take a look at uh, the chat to see if we have any other questions. I'm seeing another question here. Um, question states, why does it say the business category you have selected in your profile prevents access to this feature? Okay, so that's a that's a, a quite a good question um, asked in the chat there. Tawanda, is that something that you will be able to answer? Yes, I believe so. I believe so. So we do have, I think, uh, that uh, um, customers referring to these one of these banners. So we have a red version where it prevents you from using certain features, and I think it's it's uh, it's linked to uh, certain types of businesses. So I think there's a certain uh, uh, types of businesses that are not allowed uh, to trade with uh, features uh, with online payment features. Um, I won't try and mention examples because I, I I I don't have them. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure I'll be right, but they are businesses that are restricted from uh, trading online based on the business category that you've selected. So you might have something to do with that. Uh, you might have to just to chat to our support team to assist you there. Thanks for that answer, um, Tawanda. And I believe that the support team can, you know, break it down and give you all the information that you need to know um, concerning why um, you've received that message. Uh, moving on to the next question. We have a question here from Alfred who's asking, can Ikoka integrate with Shopify? I can quickly answer that question. At this point in time, we do not have uh, integration with Shopify. Um, it's something that we are planning on launching um, at some sometime soon. Um, at this point in time, we do have integration with all the other e-commerce platforms that uh, you can use. So Tawanda's open up the screen there. We have WordPress, Wix, and Shopstar. But Shopify is something that's within our um, site to work on as well. Um, we have another question here from Njabulo who asks, how safe is it to do multiple pay links in terms of being hacked? That's a, that's a good question. I think in the world of cybersecurity and online shopping, um, being hacked is something that you should be cautious about. So I'm going to throw this question at Tawanda. Um, yeah. Do you have any uh, good answers to this? Yeah, I'm, I'm with my limited cyber security knowledge. <laughs> um, look, I'm trying to understand what would be hacked. I guess your Ikoka account could be hacked um, if that's what uh, Njabula meant or I guess the customer details. What, what, I, what I can say is um, a lot of the security features, uh, the, the security features that you see on, um, um, you know, our websites that we use every day, um, uh, high-end websites that have a lot of traffic have been applied to our payment systems and we have rigorously tested uh, that uh, no one can, you know, for example, steal your credit card details or steal your customer's credit card details. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't be, yeah. So those things are in place. Um, yeah, uh, that that's as much as I can answer that question. I think it's, it's a tricky one. I think, uh, you know, hackers, um, sometimes find a way, but I think we, we've tried to cover our backs as, as much as possible. Thanks for that answer, Tawanda. And I, bearing in mind that you're not a cybersecurity <laughs> expert, we do have those in, in, in the office and uh, hopefully one day we're able to talk about that in more detail. Uh, but to our knowledge, um, as a FinTech, we take security extremely serious because we do deal with a lot of financial information and we are abiding by the most stringent regulation um, in the country as, as far as, you know, cyber security and, and um, hacking is concerned. So um, thanks for that, Tawanda. I think the last question that we have before we move into the next uh, bit of the showcase would be uh, from Wonderman again. Um, can donations be recurring? 
Uh, that's the first question. And then the second question is, does the system allow clients to donate on a monthly basis? Um, really nice and interesting questions from Wonderman over there. Tawanda? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the, I'll, I'll start with the first one. So can uh, donations be recurring? I think um, my answer is yes, uh, based on the, how the, the functionality works. So basically, um, you can share the donation link with as many people as possible and they can all donate uh, the different amounts. I think what we've done is we haven't been, we, we don't allow you to specify an amount, which um, sort of ties in well with the concept of donation where it's up to the person who's donating. Um, so the, the donation link can be used as many times by as many people, um, if that answers your question. And then the second one is um, the re monthly recurring. So we don't have that feature yet. And I think it ties very well into the subs subscriptions uh, concept. Um, I would have to check in with some of my team to see where that sits on the backlog, uh, but it's, it's, it's a feature we don't have yet, but I think um, you might expect to see it in the future. I can't make promises, but yeah, uh, we don't have that yet. Cool, thanks for that, Tawanda. And yeah, just to uh, top it off, uh, that feature is something that uh, has come up in, in conversations and is well within sites, um, similar to uh, Shopify and some of the other questions that have been asked. So um, keep in mind that we are as a business, you know, building these products with you, our merchants and business owners in mind, and we're trying as much as possible to enable you to get paid online. So we'll transition back into our walkthrough, Tawanda. Um, I believe what you have next in store is the invoice, um, if I'm not mistaken, after yeah. which we will transition into some of the remaining questions within our chat. Take it away. Thanks, Frank. All right, um, I'm going to wrap up the, the walkthrough uh, by taking you guys through the, the IK invoice um, product. So again, um, you can access this through um, the payment options uh, as one of the sub menus. So if you log into your dashboard, you navigate to payment options, IK invoice, uh, you'll be able to access your invoice. When you open the invoice, uh, you have a bit of description about what the what you can do and what the feature is. You also have the ability to find out a bit more about what an invoice is. So we've created some very simple screens for you to understand what uh, is in, what an invoice is and what is entailed in creating an invoice. So um, you can add your customer details. You can include some line items as per the standard invoice layout, as well as uh, share with your customers um, that particular um, invoice uh, via WhatsApp or, or email. <clears throat> Perfect. As well as you can uh, track your invoices through, through our history feature to see which invoices have been paid um, and which ones have not, which is, we understand, quite vital in terms of running a business. And this will allow you to then, uh, you know, um, streamline your own um, your payment collection process. I think what one one other feature that I would just want to mention, I'd probably come up in the questions, is the ability to send reminders when your invoices have not been paid. So that's a feature that's sitting in our backlog and will probably be coming through in the next couple of months, uh, where you can then, if an invoice is not paid, you can then uh, send a, a reminder to your customer to to pay that invoice. But for now, it's not available, but definitely in the works um, to be added to 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 this product. <clears throat> So yeah, you have the ability to to learn a bit more about the feature as well as go to our help center page from there. Um, under here, you've got uh, a few examples uh, of, of uh, the, the basically the list of all the invoices you have created. In my case, it's just examples, uh, but uh, in most of your cases, it would actually be real customers that you have rendered services to. So I'll click create invoice. It's quite straightforward. You then be able to see that uh, invoice history again. And from there, you can just click uh, create IK invoice. So from here, you can then specify your customer details. I'm just going to go with uh, Connie, put in the email address. OK, I'm going to uh, specify a number. You have the option to add uh, extra details um, about your customer, whether that's uh, the country they're in and um, their um, uh, address information. And this might be important for certain customers that need to then use the invoices for uh, certain audit purposes. So you have that option, but we don't um, 
it's not mandatory, it's optional. So in this case, I won't put it and I will proceed. And then from here, you can then start adding your line items to, to the invoice. So you can then click add line item. So I've got um, a line item here. So let's say you are uh, <clears throat> a plumbing business and you've rendered uh, some services and you wanna invoice for those. So you can then um, <clears throat> provide the details. Um, so perhaps it's a uh, one times shower Show a mixer replacement and the price. You can see here the, the description is also required. So you just have to paste a bit of description about what you actually did there. So I just put it like that. So just go to, oh. So just put in uh, the item name as the shower and the description as the uh, not mixture, sorry, my bad, mixer, replacement, um, and then charge that 1,400. You can then specify the quantity, which will be one. You can, you have the option to choose whether um, you want to include VAT if you're a VAT registered business. Otherwise, you can just leave that uh, as unchecked. So once you're done with your line item, you can click save, um, and you can proceed to add another line item. So add another one, um, which is a washing machine. Okay, we'll say uh, inlet installation. I, ho I hope uh, there's no plumbers on the webinar. They, they might think, think I'm, I'm, I'm too cheap <laughs> for, for rendering these services. So apologies if there's any plumbers. Um, and then um, I'll specify a quantity of one and add that. <clears throat> And then lastly, I'll add a third line item, which is the, the basin, uh, repaired uh, basin leak for 480 rand. Uh, the quantity is one and we'll include that for that. So you click save. So you've got your line items. These line items can be as many as you want them to be. Uh, I've put in three, they could be one or they could be 10 just based on uh, how your invoice is set up. Down here, you can see um, your, your VAT total and as well as your grand total even before you uh, proceed to the next step. So if you click next, you get a preview of your invoice or so your subtotal, um, your VAT amount, as well as the total due to the customer. You can specify the due date uh, for the for the invoice. I'll just make it today. And you have the option, uh, because we understand uh, some businesses uh, have their own invoicing um, tracking system where the, these invoices are being tracked and you want to specify the invoice number maybe based on um, um, the the number yeah, the number of jobs you've done that year or that month it just depends otherwise if you don't um specify an invoice number that's okay it's optional we'll generate one from for you from our side that's unique uh, for you to track you can then add additional information that this will sit uh, at the bottom of your invoice so you can add something like um thank you uh, for your business to your customer and that's it. So you can then go to the review stage. Um, so you can then have a look. Um, I've specified my details here uh, of my business um, and the invoice number, the VAT number, the invoice date, the line items. You have the option to edit these line items, delete some of them if maybe you see that um, maybe the customer wanted to pay a certain amount or some there's an error that you created you can always come and adjust these numbers before you share it you have the option to also edit your payment terms as well as your customer information so it's all editable um even before you send an invoice so you get a preview uh, before sending the invoice and yeah once you're ready you can just click share and you can uh, send that invoice uh, over email or whatsapp so your invoice was successfully sent and over email it will be sent to the email that you specified under customer details. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, from here, you can then come back and you can see that um, uh, your invoice was created um, for your customer Connie on this particular date, it's due on this particular date and the amount. You have the option to reshare it from here. So you can click share again. Um, if you lost the link or the customer says, I can't find the invoice, you can then come through, um, uh, 
choose the option. It could be WhatsApp this time so that it's easy for them. Uh, yeah, they can then <clears throat> uh, click WhatsApp and then share the, the, the invoice. Um, I'm just going to try and copy this link here and open it uh, to show you guys what you'd see, uh, what the customer would see from their end. Let's hope it works. Um, okay, perfect. So this is what your customer would then see. So your invoice from your company name. Um, hi, Connie, to make your payment, please click the button below. So if you specified all your items, your line items that you put in the invoice, all the invoice details, the trade, your trading name. If you had specified the customer's um, detail, um, the customer's uh, um, address as well, it would appear here. And then yeah, from here, you can then, uh, your customer can then click to pay, which would then basically take them through that same journey where they can then um, select whether they wanna pay via credit card or instant EFT. And then like that, the payment will be processed through eCoca, it will appear on your profile and then it will settle you um, the next uh, day or the day after that, just depending on your bank. But yeah, that's um, the, the flow for creating uh, an IK invoice, very simple, very straightforward. You can do this. And again, I think this is one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning. Our, our dashboard is built for mobile. I think we're just demonstrating it on desktop just because you can see a bit more, uh, but we very much build this dashboard with mobile in mind because we understand uh, a lot of you are accessing this on the go. Uh, you're doing it uh, maybe after leaving the customer's uh, place or even in your shop and the mobile phone is always close by to you. So our dashboard is fully mobile responsive. So you can access all these features on your mobile, no problem. I'll stop there um, and uh, take any questions. Cool. Thanks, Tawanda, for that extensive uh, walkthrough again. Uh, really valuable, uh, the types of features that you have uh, displayed and shown to us. We do have a lot of questions, good questions in, in the chat. I'm just about to go through a few of them. Um, first, we have from M. Uh, good day. Can you please discuss fees? How are how are they charged and on which payment methods? So uh, we've responded to that and I'll just reiterate the answer that we've given. We are one of the lowest in the industry. We charge 2.85% on card and then 2% on in instant EFT. We have another question from Alfred um, who asks about how do you change the status from unpaid to paid? if you send invoice to customer, but they pay you in cash? That's a really good question, Alfred. At this point in time, we don't have the ability to change uh, to paid, but I am aware that there is a new product release that will be coming out soon where that exact feature has been built in. So um, you guys will notice the trend here is we are listening, um, getting feedback from businesses and incorporating those updates into the product as we go. Um, then last but not least, we have a question from Robert who asks, can you give a high level overview of Shopstar integration, please? Robert, you are on the money because our next webinar is going to be exactly about that. We're going to do a uh, payment gateway walkthroughs um, in, in this level of detail where we go through how it works, um, how to use it on your website and how to actually get paid and derive value from these products and features. So with that, I believe we've gone through most of the questions. Um, if I haven't called out any questions, they are probably being answered by our team in the background. I just want to uh, thank you, Tawanda, for joining this call and uh, walking through all those features in, in such good detail, answering all those questions. I want to thank all the business owners for making time this evening to be with us um, and learn more about how you can turn those scrolls into uh, active customers that are paying and um, you know increasing your customer base. So um, thank you so much for that. And we look forward to seeing you guys at the next webinar. Have a wonderful Thursday evening and have a wonderful weekend. See you soon.